You know, we come up with so many excuses on the animals as to how bad they are. What we need to start looking at is our own selves and stop making excuses. Because when we make excuses, it's because we have failed. How can we blame a lesser being for being responsible for its behavior? I don't get it. I never did. Hey guys, this is Lauren with uh, Peace of My Heart Rescue. Uh, the video that you're getting ready to see is an interview I did a while back with one of my mentors, uh, Sam Malatesta. That's where I learned how to rehab some of the toughest dogs that I get, like the puppy mill breeders and the shy dogs, but he has extensive knowledge and aggression. We rescues get a lot of a lot of questions sent to us, either email, text, or Facebook. Uh, what do I do? My, my dog has bitten a dog, or a kid, or killed a dog, or they're kind of afraid to live with it. This, this arch that he talks about, but this is something very, very specific to him that he has come up with to kind of help his students understand how your dog kind of builds in aggression and how it might turn into a bite eventually. There's more of these to come. I took a three hour interview with him, so there's lots of little segments that I can add. Um, but this is one in particular about a pit bull in Kentucky many years ago. I think it was 2004. I had to look it up. And I think in the, in the video, I thought it was 2006. Um, a little girl that was um, attacked by their pit bull. And not only did it attack, it, it ingested um, part of her scalp. And we, we definitely not talking about this to bring her any, you know, any kind of shame or whatever but it's, it's something that we need to learn from as as dog owners and as, as a community of dog lovers so listen to this consider it um and see what you think thanks a lot remember, um, there was a story back in 2006 around then um, about a little girl in local kentucky or out in kentucky that the, there was a pit bull on a chain and i showed that video or the video clip of it on the news and it showed it was a pit bull it was on a chain and it attacked this little girl mm -hmm. and it ate her scalp when yes. it got to her yeah and you notice something in the footage you like rewind that they ran it back and there was a playground yeah and there's the chain and then the doghouse was flipped upside down yeah so when people say pit bulls are dangerous it's you know i've had Schnauzers. I mean, we've. You remember Otis? Oh my uh, gosh! I mean, yeah. dogs that have been teased, and it doesn't matter what breed. But you were telling me about, you know, pit bulls in general being. I mean, territorial breeds like pits or Dobermans or German Shepherds or whatever, like you were saying, uh, if they're teased like that, um, I mean, they carry it for a while. Yes. And it builds up. It builds up and it builds up until finally it doesn't build. It. Then what happens is like there was a playground. Chances are this was a dog that was a puppy on a chain and these kids are playing in the playground. The dog's getting more excited and more excited and more excited. It builds. A, I remember. Do you remember me talking about the predatorial arch? Well, I can draw it on the board if you want to use a camera. I can show you in a minute. Let me clean this off because it's better to draw it. Each dog has a predatorial arch. It is how long it takes for that fuse to develop. And if you understand the psychology of it, then you would know what I'm talking about when it comes to, i.e., Marley and her fuse, lengthening the fuse or shortening it, right? You draw a line right down the middle. Dogs have several drives for its specific food, prey, pack, and defense drive. A dog has three levels to four levels of thresholds. From here, which is zero, let's say to 10. If your dog stays at zero to 10, it takes, oh, I don't know, let's say 10 seconds just for the sake of doing it. Each dog is different to get to that heightened point, right? The minute that dog gets to that heightened point, it will naturally go into defensive reaction, fight or flight, bite or run, right? Okay. When you've got a pit bull, Pit bulls are powerful animals that will defend themselves and protect themselves. This concept is based on protection dog training. When we're doing protection work with shepherds or dogs, we tend to, just before they bite, is bring them up to a level this high. So high would be a high drive, high intense focus, 
based on anxiety, hypertension, and hypertension, okay? This is the misconception of drive, the difference between drive and obedience and drive and protection. This, if I were to look at body language, laying down on his own sleeping, kind of like I said to you today with your schnauzer, let me see how long it takes for her to lay down in this room. Don't tell her, because she's telling me she's calming down. This would here is laying down alert, right, with ears perked forward, right? This would be sitting, sitting, alert, right? Mm -hmm. Standing alert. Standing forward. Do you know what I mean by standing forward? Yeah. The chest is up. Yeah. Okay. When you're looking at your body language, okay, as each layer goes up higher and higher, the higher you get here, the shorter the fuse. The problem is, is let's say you have a dog that is anxious or hypertension. What happens is this little pit bull puppy was probably laying down in the first time in its life. Then the kids are starting to play and she's young and she starts to get alert because the kids are coming, jumping around in that little playground, right? <laughs> and there's a chain dog out there and the dog has to shift over. Then what happens is, before that comes, now she's sitting and being alert. You know how that puppy gets anxious and, oh, I want to go play? And the ears are, and you start to hear the whining? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what happens is it starts to stand and it starts to bark. But it's not an aggressive bark, it's a frustration bark. The higher pitched bark. Mm -hmm. This is all what happens when that dog is at a young age. Well, what starts to happen now <coughs> is anytime that dog sees a kid, as each one of these levels goes up with being tied to a chain, the dog is actually getting more and more anxious. Then what happens is this dog is tied to a chain and it's all excited, and the owner goes there and pets it. How you doing today? Here's your food. So now you're training that dog to stay like this. Yeah. Okay? That's where it stays. Yeah. Its adrenaline flow is there. This is accelerated just by tying a dog to a dog house. When you walk in the house and that dog is all excited to see you, you're petting it. You're actually perpetuating a hypertension. Well, if you watch wolves hunt, you watch dogs hunt, they go into stalking mode. Do you notice how it's very, very calculated? Mm -hmm. They're building. And as they build, they start to pace more. They start to get more alert. Once that dog is standing forward, from here to here, zero to 10, takes one second. But it's not a calculated adrenaline flow. It's an adrenaline surge on top of a surge of adrenaline. It's kind of like you had 10 drinks of alcohol, but you have one more drink and that's it. Your toast, you're passing out or you're gonna get sick. Well, that's what happens. Well, once all of this stuff starts to contain all this hypertension and this anxiety, remember what the dog is. It's a predator. It's got to let it go somewhere. Where is it going to go? Correct. It's natural process is to get wound up in prey mode and then shoot myself over in a defense mode to satisfy. What you will see, every dog who goes like that, Lauren, and then bites somebody, the dog calms down afterwards. Yeah every single time. So for that dog to rip that kid's skull off, scalp off and eat it, that tells me that dog had so much pent up energy that it sat there and couldn't contain it anymore. When it finally let it go, it probably let two years of crap go out all at once. Why do you think I train and pray? I teach people how to divert it when it builds to get rid of that anxiety and reward the dog for being calm. The dog starts to sit down in the aspect of protection. We do bring dogs up here and give them their bite, but we work diligently to keep them somewhat here and don't feed all of that stuff. So the dog knows to calm down, stay calm at all times. But you saw Marley. She can go from being an absolute calm, wonderful dog to a dog that will attack, but on a threat. But she also knows how to self-regulate. She knows the difference. That poor pit bull didn't get that. All that pit bull got is I'm alone, and every stimuli I get just heightens me more and more and more, and then bingo. Eventually, because that dog bit, it is now shot right back down to here. But here it is. Because it shot back down to here, and it's had such a life of living up here all the time, every time it shoots itself down, 
It doesn't think it's normal. So it puts itself back up even higher. That's the damage. Mm -hmm. And pit bulls, like most people, and even people, when they're, okay, when we are upset about something, let's say you're having an argument, and you're right up here, how much more does it send you over? How much more can you contain when you're constantly up here? You will watch people, especially youth in stressful environments, where they're constantly threatened and challenged, that they always walk around like this looking for trouble, right? What do they do once they get and it keeps on going? They do something really wacko. That's right. But what about dogs on an invisible fence in the front yard? Bad move. Yeah. You, I fixed that. I had, I had an invisible fence with my Doberman in Cincinnati. And it was in the front yard in the back. And of course, you know, when they install it, they do it all the way around your house because it makes it convenient for you. And he was having so much fun sneaking around the house and barking on one side, and I'd go to that side, and he'd be on the other side. Like he would know, and he would just rrr, rrr, rrr. and you said pull it into the backyard. And when we, I walked through the neighborhood, and you know, many of my neighbors know this. All the invisible fence dogs are in the front yard. Oh wow! I mean, Think about it's, that. You know, Here's your invisible fence line. Somebody's walking a dog, maybe it's back this far, which would be that, you know, and that dog's constantly walking up, being challenged and running side to side, yep. pacing. How much adrenaline is that? A lot. How much pain can you sustain when you've got a high amount of adrenaline? A lot. How many times have you seen dogs running through the invisible fence? Yep, and they bite somebody. And they bite somebody because, again, like that thing, they're heightened, they're brought up to the high anxiety, unresolved, a little bit more pain, and bingo. Yeah. Well, what about the I dogs? don't use prongs, I don't use shock collars, I don't use any of that crap because I know what it does. I want dogs calm. I want dogs with long fuses. Yeah. Okay? We also talked about um, there was a pit bull that snuck out the front door and bit a kid. And yeah. people talk about these, oh, it's always a pit bull, it's always a pit bull. And you explained once the reason why it did that, you know, the windows were open and it was watching this kid playing the neighbor kid or whatever That's it was. Right. Seeing playing in the front yard, it's like close the window, don't give them that opportunity, you know, crate them or whatever, mm -hmm. so that that doesn't happen. And any well, neighborhood you go to, I don't, I've, I've been east coast, west coast, I take my dogs with me on vacation as much as I can. And able, I don't care what neighborhood it is, I don't care how much money they got, I don't care what it is. But when I walk my dog, you know, I see them bouncing around the couch. Yeah. People go, oh, I'll let him look outside. I'm like, don't do that. Do you remember, remember I told you the story of the little Jack Russells that were in the window? I ever tell you that story? It's been a while. Three doors down, a guy used to have about seven or eight Jack Russells running around in his house. Hmm. The multi-dog thing. Wow. And they used to have a couch there. Yeah. And then he had the curtains. Mm -hmm. Well, you know me, I have to entertain myself, right? Gonna be bad. What? This is gonna be bad. No, it isn't. I used to take my okay. dog and train him on their front lawn. Yeah. Can you tell me what those Jack Russells did? Attacking each other. And what else they do? Um, the frustration yeah. built so high, the couch, there was no more couch left. No. Oh, wow. All the curtains were pulled down. Yeah. Did I help the person? Yeah. Yes, I did. How did I help that person? They said, we can't put these dogs here anymore or shut the window or get rid of the couch That's because right. they're tearing it up. That's right. Until so. the sad part about people and their dogs is until something bad happens to them personally, i.e. you let your dog run off and play with other dogs without asking and then that dog pulls you halfway across the road and across traffic, you won't do anything. Mm -hmm. See, we've become such a selfish society that we stay blind unless we are own hurt personally and we don't think about how things can hurt others, right?